we doing guys? I'm here at a customer that we're having an issue with cooling. Um, the original service call was for uh, just not feeling right. They thought there was no airflow. Wasn't cooling the space. This is a three ton train fan coil unit. Chilled water. And it is a plenum return. There's outside air, uh, a return fan over here, slash exhaust fan, depending on what mode the unit's in, and uh, the fresh air and purge happen in this duct here, which goes outside. So in the winter time, or when the unit's economizing, it'll take fresh air in through here coming down this duct here and inside this mixing box here there's an actuator down in this corner and there's a linkage connecting a damper from the outside which right now this is closed sorry this is open here and this is closed here so what will happen is during the summer months we got chilled water coming in to a chilled water coil again this is a three ton unit and at this point, this damper here is closed, and this is open. So our return is coming from here, okay? So the airflow comes down through here, comes to here, and there's actually an actuator right there, a Blimo, which is closed right now. So the air comes through here, it hits the closed damper, and it's drawn in through the return and then over your chilled water coil, and then delivered to the space through that wall, which I'll show you in a little bit. So when I was here first about two weeks or so ago, we went through everything in this unit. Uh, obviously the first things when they say there's no airflow is we check the filters, they were fine. Blower speed, that was fine. Uh, tightened the belt a little bit, but it amped out good. So we appeared to have good airflow at least leaving the unit. Uh, within here there are a bunch of fire smoke dampers. We, conf uh, we visually confirm that they are in fact open. So for all intents and purposes, this unit is sized correctly, we should be cooling the space. And it is not. So if we look right now, so I have a temperature probe in the return. And now this is the day before 4th of July. So it is July 3rd, 2017, and I'm in a government building, so a lot of people have off today. But in a, here, which is where I'm at, is 74 up here, and then it's 75 return temperature. So the space is 75 degrees. So given a day like today, this unit should have no problem pulling the space down. But we are having problems. Uh, and if you're asking, yes, we do have chilled water flow. Uh, you, you check the strainer. Actually, I have the strainer out right now. As you can see, it's clean. So we do have chilled water flow going through the coil. Uh, I believe right now the temperature of the water is somewhere between 46 and 48 degrees Fahrenheit. So we should be, we should be doing good. Now, I will put that back in. Strainers have to be in place. So, the original call I came, and like I said, we checked airflow, checked all the dampers, went through everything. Uh, there was one damper I couldn't check, which I'm going to show you now, but I had to cut in an access door so I could see it. There's the return fan again. So let me go over there and show you. Okay, so right now I'm on the other side. 
the unit is in that attic. I'm in a separate attic right next door, adjacent to it. And this side here is my supply. And that's the return. So air is coming up from the space this way and going through the return fan, coming around, going through the unit, and being distributed through this guy, which does one room, and then this guy on the bottom here doing another room. Okay, so now there are fire smoke dampers on the supplies. The return has one here. Uh, there's a few others uh, on the fresh air. But when I came here today, the only last time I was here, I could not check this damper because there was not a uh, inspection access panel. So I had to cut my own in to take a look. Just wanted to make sure it was open. Even though I was drawing amperage, the proper amperage on my motor, so I knew we were kind of moving air, but I just wanted to visually confirm it. All right, this one has an access panel. But when I open this up and cut it open, what I noticed. So you can see is let's see if I can get down there. Sorry. Okay, there you go. It's a plenum return. Okay. Now right here is the return grate, which is above some pretty big sheetrock ceilings. Uh, you really can't visually see it from the space itself, but last time I was here, which I'll cut in some pictures of, I stuck my phone up into a very small hole in the sheetrock, which is what is serving as the return grate. I was able to take a picture of that grate there. Now I didn't know how far away it was from up here, but now I can visually inspect and I can see. Now I always tell my students that whenever you're on a service call and you're trying to find an issue, or find the solution to the problem is act like a detective using your eyes, your ears, touch, smell, sight and taking the whole picture not just what you're looking at and a few things I noticed that I didn't like I don't know if you picked up on it when I came over here before but if you look this penetration is not only completely wrong but it's wide open. The purpose of a fire smoke damper is to isolate the ductwork penetration from one floor to the next or from one fire rated area to the next. So this damper is serving no purpose because down this hole is literally the return and the other space. So if there was a fire down there all the smoke would travel up through this chase and get into this space. So this defeats the purpose of this damper. Okay, and on the supply, same thing, not sealed. So that made me think, and it, and it hit me. That little three ton unit downstairs is trying to cool the spaces downstairs and this giant hot 84 degree attic. It's pretty large. It goes up and then through this opening, which is where I had to crawl to get here, as you can see, is pretty it's pretty big. It goes all the way over to there. So there's your problem. A little three ton unit is probably trying to cool anywhere from five to ten tons worth of area. So for now what I'm going to do, just for today because it's pretty hot outside, is I have some cardboard, some corrugated plastic, some armor flex, and I'm just going to rig it up just to block off those two penetrations so I can try to prevent the air from up here being drawn in through this hole 
through this hole, from down here, sorry, from up here, through this return, into the unit. And why is that important? Well, think about it. When you're trying to cool a space, you're taking the air from the space and conditioning it, running it through the coil, dropping the temperature, lowering the discharge air by pulling the heat out from that room. Now, with a normal system, the temperature should progressively go down to a good discharge air temperature. But here, it's canceling it out constantly because it's adding heat steadily. It's a steady supply of heat from this upstairs attic, which is unconditioned. So right now, we have a 75 degree return temperature. So let's see what it'll come out once I block this off. Okay, so I did a little rig job, just temporarily, just so I can test the theory, see how it goes. I didn't have any, or shall I say, I didn't have enough sheet metal on my truck to use sheet metal, so sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So grab some cardboard, some foil tape, sealed off the supply up here because this penetration down here is all common under this floor. So the ceiling that's below this is all common from here to here. So I had to seal both penetrations, which should have been done on the construction when this was installed. But I guess the guys didn't want to squeeze through these little openings. Luckily, I'm skinny and haven't had lunch yet. So like I said, I just put a little bit. Like I said, it's not the best looking, but it's going to serve its purpose. And remember, whenever you do some work and you make a mess like I did with all the backing of the tape and some sheet metal, make sure you clean it up. Even though no one comes up here, no one's going to see it. I easily could go toss it over in the corner over there and no one would ever be the wiser. But I'll know. And for some reason, if the guys did want to come up here or when they come to repair it and they see the garbage, they'll know that I did it. And that's not good for you or your company. Your customer won't like you leaving garbage around. So now I've got to let it run a little bit and see what we get, see if it made any improvement. 73. 73.2. I'll take it. That's the coldest I've seen it. It's been pretty much 75 rock solid. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, this is my first one, so cut me some slack. I'm going to try to get some more videos up regularly of uh, different things, mostly commercial. That's one thing I noticed on YouTube that appears to be lacking is commercial HVAC. So I'm going to try to get them up regularly, maybe uh, once a week, or if I can. But uh, if you like it, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. One last thing. I uh, found these old filters up here in the mechanical room. So do yourself and your company a favor. Pick up after yourself. Um, I didn't leave these filters here, but I'm still going to pick them up. Because if the customer does come up here, they are going to blame your company. So do yourself a favor. Clean up after yourself and uh, your other technicians if they might leave stuff around. But I believe these have been here for quite a while. I don't think my company changes the filters here. So, thanks.